We also got 12 p.m. Australia time. <laughs> we can probably get started, yeah, Mina? Yeah, let's do it. Awesome, go ahead. All right. Um, hi, everyone. Um, welcome back for those that are joining us again from last week. And welcome to those uh, joining us for the first time this week. Um, we're going to uh, start off with prayer real quick. Um, trying to see if, okay. All right. So, name of the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, thank you for everything that you've given us. Thank you for all the things that you've done for us. And, and thank you for bringing us here today to, to learn and and dive deeper into the amazing hymns that you have given us and, and have blessed this church with and uh, have blessed us with lord to to really unite with you and unite with each other through singing them and and lord we ask you to be with us and guide us as uh, in in what we're teaching and, and guide the listeners to to hear really what you have in store for us in, in regards to how we're learning and what we're what we're singing and what we're doing. And we, we ask you to continuously be with us. Um, let us have a fruitful and edifying conversation and, and session and, uh, and, and Lord, let it all be to your glory. And through the intercession of St. Mary, your beloved Virgin Mother, St. John the Baptist, the great foreigner and baptizer and the blessings of this holy theophany, Lord, we ask you here as we pray, pray, thankfully saying our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread as we forgive those trespass against us. It is not the temptation, but deliver us from evil one. Christ Jesus, our Lord, for thine is the kingdom of God. Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. All righty. Um, so this week, we are going to dive a little bit deeper into musical notation. Um, so now we are, we're going from, uh, you know, just the basics, the con conceptual which we, we started off last week, some basic rhythms and stuff like that, to a little bit more of the reading part. So we, we learned history, misconceptions, rhythm. And now we're going to go into beginner to kind of intermediate reading of musical notes. And, and so this time, we didn't sing too much last time. This time, we're, we're going to sing a lot more. And we're going to show you examples and, and we're going to be pointing to the musical notes as we're going and we're going to discuss some fundamental terminology. And, and the reason we're going to kind of go into terminology isn't really because it's, you know, uh, it's important or anything like that. It's just easier to talk about. Um, so when we're talking to each other, when we're teaching each other. Um, when we're trying to point out this part or this part, it's a lot easier to kind of have a standardized terminology for us to reference each time. So um, again, just like we did last time, if you have any questions, feel free to pop it in the chat. We're going to kind of ask everybody to stay on mute throughout. Um, but anytime we're singing, I definitely encourage all of you to sing along as we are singing. So that way, you know, if, if what you're singing doesn't match what we're singing, you know, okay. And that can kind of help you in, or can inspire some questions. Be like, why are we singing it this way? What should this rhythm be? Why is the rhythm this way? Um, or, or why are the note, why did the notes look like that? Y'all had incredible questions last time that actually really helped the conversation move forward and progress and, and helped us really uh, clarify and, and focus on the, the right thing. So please, as you continue to do that, we, we love the engagement uh, and we love the, the, um, the, the questions that you guys were bringing up. And, and as discussed before, next week we'll go into different practices and uh, kind of advanced reading and application uh, and kind of how to teach through music notes. Uh, before we get started, we, we do want to, we want to ask you a quick question. So yeah, go ahead to the next one. What is a hymn that you always wanted to learn but struggled a lot in learning? Or uh what hymn took you a really long time to learn so uh and yes uh thank you for the question the comments these are recorded and it is live streamed uh at right now on youtube as well um so yeah feel free to uh to pop in the chat what is a hymn that you always wanted to learn but struggled a lot and what hymn took you a really long time to learn or maybe you're trying to learn a hymn right now what hymn is taking you a really long time 
to to learn and to to nail down. Go ahead and let us know in the chat. Let's see some answers here about hymns that you're trying to learn or have always wanted to learn. Yeah, oh, Miguel, yeah, same. Yes. Make it through and it's the long praxis. Wow. Oh, yes. A little effort okay. oblations. Yeah. These are really good ones. The long, this sensor of pure gold. Okay. Oh, yes, that's, for that's a good one. Friday. Yeah. Third host, I think, is Moab Choice. Is yeah. What is being referenced. Wedding hymns. Seven, oh, seven tunes. Seven I, tunes. I, I don't, I still don't. <laughs> <laughs> I, I struggle so much with that one. Um, Oik. Okay. Honestly, P Oik in English for me is, is very tough. A lot Seven of people have again. Seen, people say that. Um, I don't. I don't know who's here. Uh, that was in in like when trying me trying to learn uh, Tai Shorty in English um, was very very difficult without music notes. I actually struggled a lot. Hymn of Joy. Okay. A long to yeah. Nice. Uh, these are some some great so hymns, very, guys. You know, this is very inspiring to see. Hopefully, you actually, um, we will definitely showcase to you guys before the end of lecture three how much is available to you in music notes. Yeah. And I don't think I've seen a hymn listed that is not available in music notes. So I'll just go out and say it right now. Uh, but oh. maybe we'll go over a few of these next week. We'll see. So yeah, and. You. And this will be this will help us kind of gauge as we get into the advanced hymns and how to learn advanced hymns through music notes. Um, this definitely gives us a great idea into what to get into there. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and go to the next slide. Um, we're going to go through a, a oh before our quick review. Somebody asked about the Macomb scale last week. We weren't too sure about it, and I, I wasn't too confident in my my knowledge there to get into it, but. Uh, uh, we had somebody, um, was it uh, Abuna? What was Abuna? Abuna, yeah. Abuna Abram Kamal from SMSJ in Canada. Yeah. Yes. Um, he he saw the, the YouTube video and messaged us um, to let us know. And so, yes, the Makam is a scale and it is usually used in the Arabic or Middle Eastern melodies. Okay. And so I want to emphasize melodies here because the melody is the main line or the main tune of a hymn or a song. It is rare that hymns or songs in this scale are harmonized. So um, while we're used to kind of some Western hymns or songs or even spiritual songs or uh, like a Christian songs, stuff like that, they're harmonized and there's people singing different notes at the same time. That's what a harmony is. That's very rare for us to see or hear in the Arabic or Middle Eastern tunes. And if and if it is, it's not it doesn't exactly line up right or they're just singing Arabic words to a Western style scale. So um, a lot of people are used to the, the stuff that we learn as kids is do, re, mi, fa, sol, la. So that is actually called the major scale. And that's, that's what is very commonly used in the, uh, uh, in the Western music or a minor scale is very similar, um, but has a little bit different tune. So the Macomb scale is, uh, it has di different variations. It, it has different like behaviors. So a scale is usually the interval between notes. So you have like this step and then a smaller step above it and then a bigger step, et cetera. So like each type of scale has a different pattern. Um, they're usually fairly standard. The Macomb kind of changes, like it's a different interval going up and going down. So it's a little bit of a complex concept, but it, it it's the reason why a lot of our music and a lot of our hymns sound a little bit different than some of the hymns that are, and songs that we hear here uh, like, in the West in general, or um, in uh, popular music or popular classical music, you know, like Mozart, Beethoven, et cetera. Um, all right, and if you have any more questions about that, I'm not sure I can answer them, but <laughs> I could try or we can, we can Google it together. Um, so yeah, let's, let's go on to the next one to review. Um, so we looked at some of this last time where we have the circle is four beats. The, the open circle with the stick is two beats. The closed circle with a stick is one beat. The closed circle with a stick and a tail is half a beat. 
And then the, the closed circle with two tails is a fourth of a beat. And what we're gonna get into this week is a little bit of the terminology. And so kind of this shows us how like four beats is divided into two, two beats divided uh, into one and one, et cetera. So let's go ahead and, and, and look at the big picture here. So, so here, the circle, the open circle is gonna be called a whole note. And we're gonna refer to that as a whole note as it fills up um, uh, like one of those boxes that we talked about, uh, which we're gonna call a measure. And I'll get to that in a second. The half note is, is two beats. Quarter note, and, and this, uh, this is where it'll get a little bit confusing, but you'll get the hang of it here fairly soon. And you'll get to know why it's called a quarter or a half or a whole instead of a one or a two. Um, the, the one with the tail is the eighth note and the one with two tails is a 16th note. Another correction from last week is the very last one, uh, uh, like the one that has four tails is actually a 64th note. I think we mentioned that it might've been a 32nd note. Um, but yeah, these we will almost never ever see in any Coptic hymns or actually really any choral music in general. Uh, most of these are be um, these very fast notes are almost exclusive for instrumentals uh, and especially certain types of instruments that will that can play very very quickly. Um, so just to add, sorry, Mina, just to add. No, the Obviously, the math here is simply the note that you see next is the one before it, but also you can do the math yourself, like how many quarter notes would equal a whole note is four, because it's four beats and so on. So don't just pay attention that two half notes equals a whole note, but all the notes equal each other. Obviously, it's just more math. But another way that will help you count, as Mina said, each measure, how many beats moving forward you have in a measure. Yes. And, and so... If you're just joining us, we uh, I, know, I saw a few people just hop in. So as you, uh, if you're just joining us, what we're doing today is we're focusing a little bit more on the terminology and and some of the rhythms that we are uh, that we reviewed last time. So let, let's go ahead and sing a quick example. Um, and this is a very common hymn that you know we sing almost every time or uh, like almost every liturgy. Alleluia! This is the day. Or a little F I P B. So starting in this note, uh, yes, thank you. On this note, um, uh, we're, it's going to count four beats in in between those two lines. So um, in between each of the two lines are four beats. And can you, if you look at measure two, Abe? Uh, so there's two uh, notes, and each of those notes is two beats. So two plus two that equals four, as we discussed last time. And if we look at measure four, Abe, you'll see that the it's half half a beat, half a, there's four notes that have half a beat and one note that has one beat and then one beat that has a rest in it. So it's one plus two plus two quarter or four quarters, which is also two, and that equals four as well. So I'm I'm going through the math fairly quickly here. Um, if if uh, hopefully this makes a little bit sense more sense as we're singing it. So Starting in the first measure. So we're going to count one, two, three. Alleluia. This is the day which the Lord has. Wait. Lord. Lord. Has made. All right. Sorry about the mess up there. So as we see, there's four. As we're counting the four beats, right? It's matching up with how many notes are sung. To keep, I want to keep going, but I'm going to ask you to kind of stay on mute, but sing with me, so you're kind of getting acquainted a little bit with the rhythm. So we're going to start with "Let Us." Let us rejoice and be glad in it. O oh Lord, save us, O oh Lord, straighten our way. 
Blessed is he who comes. All right. Uh, we're going to stop right there. So there's a couple of things here that I want to go over real quick. Uh, so at this point, there's a few things here that I want us to, to take note of. There are different things that are in front of some of these notes. So one of them looks like a hashtag or a pound sign. The other one looks like a lowercase letter B, right? Those we discussed last time is it's an indication of how the note is actually sung, not an indication of rhythm or anything like that. At this point, I don't want to, we don't want to worry about it too much. But I, the only thing I will say is the, if, it's a, um, if it's a pound sign, that's called a sharp, where the note will actually be sung a little bit higher than what we're, that, uh, that note is, how that note is usually sung. So this, this particular note is a C with that sharp in front of it, that's gonna be a C sharp, all right? And then the, the lowercase b, we call that a flat. Uh, and those, those particular notes are sung lower than what we would normally sing. So that particular note that Abe is uh, circling right there, that is an E. In this particular case, because there's a flat in front of it, it's called an E flat. And yes, um, those in... Uh, yeah, we got some comments coming so, in. It's called yeah, accidentals. So, exactly. The terminology is accidentals, uh, meaning that it's different than what was originally the starting pitch. So... It could have started as an E without a flat or a sharp or a, a, I guess a D sharp or an E flat. So, and then another question saying, would it be the black key on the piano? Not necessarily, but oftentimes, yes, because if you see how many black keys and white keys there are, there's just almost just as many in totality. But what Mina is saying is if it's a flat, you're going actually a half a step down from the original pitch. So if it was an E, but now it says E flat. E is a white key on the piano, but a half step down from that is actually a black key. So correct in this case. I don't mean if you want to chime in. Same with sharp. If it's sharp, so here it says C sharp. C also, just C without anything, is a white key, but C sharp is up a half step. So that would be a black key. Yeah. And, and kind of the reason I want to kind of move past this a little bit, because I want to remind everyone that one of the misconceptions that people have regarding to music notes is like, oh, I don't know what this note sounds like. How can I read music notes? How can I sing with music notes? And the whole, that whole idea is we don't need to know what the note actually sounds like in order to be able to sing. So we just kind of follow up or down, and especially as we're listening and, and keeping in mind that rich oral tradition that we have, we're not going away from that. We're actually using that to help us tie this to music notes and pass this down. So um, keep in mind this, what Mina told us last week to follow the dot, not the, the, not what did the you line. say? The line. Yeah. The line. Yes. Exactly. So, yes. Yeah, so as we're following that dot, as it goes up, ale, right. So ale, it's going from a lower pitch to le, which is a higher pitch. So, and that's what we're kind of focusing on there. That scale. So I can start this hymn. Allelu, right? Or allelu. It can be any pitch, right? Or any any note, but we are just kind of following the pattern and following those intervals and, and that rhythm. Um, let's Very move good on questions. to yes, thank you. Um, let's go on to the next slide. And this is what we're gonna get to some of what the what the the bars and the lines, what they look like and what are they called. So the the met and so this is called a time signature, okay? The time signature indicates, no, just the, uh, just the numbers, Abe. Uh, that, that part is called the time signature. Uh, the first part, so the S weird looking thing, that's called a clef. And yes, there are different ones, but we're really, we're only gonna be seeing a treble clef, which is this one. The, the pound sign there, and you might also see multiple pound signs or sharps or multiple little lowercase b, which are flats. excuse me, um, and that part is called a key signature. We're not gonna worry too much about that, but, um, uh, and if you see some of those sharps or flats in this section, then you'll see, you'll likely be seeing less sharps and flats throughout the piece. Um, 
the the now that the time signature indicates how many beats per measure and so and the measure is whatever is in between the two lines or each of those bars so that one one solid line that uh, expands from the, the the top of the staff to the bottom of the staff that is called a bar actually if you go to the the slide that after it after this one yeah so if you see here this is it's called a bar so in between the bar is the measure so the time signature here indicates how many beats in a measure so right now the the top i would we're going to kind of worry really about the top number bottom number will indicate different things and and kind of what um what note gets the the beat but we're, we're not going to worry too much about it but the top one is how many beats per measure and that's what we're going to really look for so the four four time is the the sorry is going to be four beats per measure the two four time is two beats per measure so the quarter note which which has one which equals one beat and there's four of them in a measure there's four uh, four beats in a measure and that quarter note that has that uh that whose length is one beat is also and there's two of them in one measure so it's two four time all right um so the the main thing i wanted to kind of focus on here is the time signature so that you're able to see ahead of time how many beats are going to be in a measure so we don't have to guess or calculate or or do kind of some of the stuff that we were looking at last time and then to kind of get the terminology of terminology of a measure. So let's go to the next slide, Abe, which is actually a little, uh, oh, sorry. There's also other weird time signatures as well. Um, we're not gonna see too many of those in, uh, in the Coptic uh, musical notation uh, or the musical notation that we're using, but most of it, it will, is very indicative. It's, it's used for weird beat hymns. Um, so we, we might see it occasionally, but it'll be very rare. Um, Either way, the 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 point of it is let's follow the top number. It'll always tell us how many beats will be in that measure. All right. So the next slide is Alleluia, the same hymn again. So we see this is four four time. We see there are four beats per measure, right? And and we see every time we're we're looking at it, um, and we can also indicate the number of hymns. So if I were right now, if I was to tell Abe. Abe, can you point to measure 15 for me? Abe would look at the numbers on the left side, which show 1, 8, 13, 19. Those are actually the measure numbers. And so if I want him to, to look at measure 15, he'd 13, we'd count 13 is that measure, 14, and then 15, that would be measure 15. So um, right now, if you are trying to, like, if you want to get our attention, be like, hey, how do we sing this measure? Go line, ahead and yeah, line number four, measure whatever. Yes, uh, or if you if you know the the measure number, uh, uh, calculate the measure number as well. Yeah. Um, does that make sense? The question about the C here. This means, I believe, common time. Correct. Oh yes, common time is four four. So if you ever see that, that's a great question. So if you ever see. Four, uh, four or C or the letter C right there. That's common time, which this is the main is half thing. time. This is cut time is two, two time, um, which is it's a little bit weird. Um, but actually, the, the Alleluia, this is the day is actually technically written in cut time, uh, which the beat actually gets. Um, so you can go ahead and go to it. Uh, and so if the beat is this. Right, this would be cut time if I sing it this way. If you listen, and this is a beat, Alleluia, this is the day which the Lord has. Can anyone tell me why this is two two time and not four four time? This is an advanced question. Go ahead, yeah. Go ahead and comment in the chat, uh, chat, or raise your hand to be unmuted if you want to answer with your mic. Ask to be unmuted, and then we can. But Mina's asking why, in the snapping that he just did and how he chanted it. All right, Timothy will unmute you. Thank so, you. yeah, Remy said it was quicker, but not just quicker. Go ahead, Timothy. 
Me? Yes, yeah. go ahead. Timothy Hanna. Oh, um, is it because like 4-4 four, four, or uh, like um, what Remy said, he said that it's faster. Yeah. Is it, isn't it because like 4-4, four, four, that's like a swaying beat and you're going at like a high paced beat kind of, if you want to say it that way? It's not so, really about the swaying. You're on the right yeah. track. Go ahead, Mina, sir. That's okay. Yeah, so sway is is more – that's not necessarily what we're going for here. So at, at this point, the two t- cut time means you're cutting both in half. You're cutting the number of beats per measure in half. So as you're noticing, I was only snapping twice in the measure. Alleluia. But the one – the beat, each beat actually went to the half note, not the quarter note. So that two, it's that that part is a little bit more. So that two is actually indicate indicative of a of a half note, meaning each beat actually goes to a half note, not a quarter note. So either way, there's a lot of weird stuff with uh, with the time signatures and stuff like that. But right now, the we're gonna focus on four four and two four. That's what you're mostly gonna see. So for the for all intents and purposes, this is a four four time. Uh, time signature, which would be sung like, Alleluia, this is, all right. Um, any questions about time signatures before we move on to the next part? And just, uh, I wanted to plug this in in the third course, but I'll say it now. Mina and I are snapping to help you guys learn the beat. But in our hymnology, what do you think keeps the beat? Who can comment in the chat? What keeps the tempo for us in Coptic hymnology? The symbols and, yep, the deaf, the symbols and they're together, always the triangle. Very good. And so um, while Mina is going over some other stuff, I'll get my symbols for you guys. And, and at the end, I'll show you what I mean. But it doesn't matter if you know what 4-4 four, four or 2-4 four means. It matters if you hear the beat that the lead deacon or the lead person starting the the pitch and tempo start on because then you'll know okay one two three four but they could go faster and they're not going to start clapping in front of the whole congregation so in this example to read the notes we're going to always snap for you guys but pay attention from now on in church how fast or slow is the person leading with the symbols going and that will always give you the four beats per measure as you're reading the notes on the screen, hopefully in the future, which in our churches in the mean and I's churches, we put notes on the screen. So that's also how you can see in church, how fast we're going, but good job in the chat and, and good engagement guys. All right. I, I have my own issues about tempo in the Coptic church, but well, uh, and keeping tempo, but we can get to that in the next class. So please, please join us. Uh, especially if you, if you led or taught hymns before, um, part of it is like how to start a hymn to make sure the congregation is singing with you the entire time and doesn't get mixed up on how to keep going and how fast or slow. Um, so, all right, let's go on to the next part. So the next part is we're going to pause from singing for a second. Uh, thank you, Remy. We, we're excited to have this go global. So please, um, and we'll, we'll plug this in the end as well, but the Coptic Hymns in English app has a lot of the musical notations that we've been working on um, that can be either put up on slides. And, and if you need to contact us to get some of these slides to be posted at church and stuff like that, please feel free uh, to, to reach out to the Coptic Hymns in English team. Um, we'll be happy to send some of those your way. Um, so what we wanted to talk about briefly before we get into singing uh, a, a lot more of it is some of the flaws that with the the musical notation as it relates to Coptic hymns. So number one, sometimes the notes don't match up exactly how it's sung. So we, we spoke about the Macomb scale. We spoke about um, the certain uh, certain scales and how things go up and down. Some of the accidentals that are there. Sometimes this doesn't match up exactly how we are singing it. And so if you were, like I mentioned briefly last time, if we were to play this on a piano, it would not sound exactly how it's sung. If you were to input this in a software that automatically plays the notes for you, it wouldn't sound correct. And so 
part of this, again, re-emphasize the importance of oral tradition and how we continue to learn from each other and how we continue to pass down the hymns as well. So listening to the recordings of whoever that it is that is our source for the church. And, and so just make sure if whoever you're listening to is the same people that we're listening to, like the rest of the church is listening to and learning. So for us and our churches, our evangelism churches, it's, it's Coptic hymns in English. So we always make sure to reference those recordings. Um, and we will all, as much as we possibly can, we will try to match up the English uh, musical notation to the recordings in, at, uh, in Coptic hymns in English app. Um, second, sometimes the notes in Coptic don't match the notes in English, okay? And, and we'll show you a good example of that. So sometimes there are a lot of syllables in Coptic and it's like two syllables in English. So we actually have to take out some of the notes that are intended in order to make the hymn fit. Um, and then sometimes there are shorthand indications to indicate embellishments. Meaning um, if there's a part that you're supposed to kind of sing or elongate or do a, a twirl or something for, it might not be indicated as multiple notes, but indicated as like um, a squiggly line, for example, above an elongated note. Um, because our source is Father Abram Gerges, um, we suggest follow his YouTube channel. He has a great YouTube channel where he teaches this. It is in Arabic, um, but if... Um, if you have any particular questions, uh, you can submit them also to Coptic Hymns English. I'm not sure we'll be able to answer, but we can definitely try or at least try to help uh, understand how that particular part is sung or, or what it means. So here we're going to do something on the next slide and we're not going to tell you exactly what we're doing. So um, I, or Abe is going to sing this slide. And then I'm going to sing it. And then we're going to ask you a question about the difference between both of us. Uh, with pointing or without pointing, Mina? W with pointing. Um, it, 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 yeah, it doesn't matter. Let's point in the beginning and then we can trail off. Okay. Today the virgin gives birth to the supreme essence and the earth offers the manger to the pro. Oh, today the virgin gives birth to the supreme. Awesome. Yeah, so, we got some comments coming in. Okay, so we're already starting to notice some differences. Okay, no embellishments in Abe's version change in tempo. Okay. Mm, which what, is yeah, what else? very characteristic of that hymn. Good job. Can I, I'm going to ask a weird question. Who sang it correctly? Yeah, look, oh, we got some technical, more vibrato. Wow. <laughs> so Mina's question, though, who sang it correctly? And who I sang it correctly? Quotations. <laughs> Wow, interesting. Okay. okay. Yeah. Some people think both are correct. Awesome. I was able to follow with Abe. Okay. Okay. So both are correct, but here is what we were intending to do. Oh, good. Andrew saying, saying it more academically. Oh, I like that one. Okay. So 
Abe followed the music notes exactly as they are written. Actually, he did a little bit of embellishment there somewhere and he caught himself and, and came back on track. So, yeah, so Abe was trying to follow the musical notes exactly as they were written. While, while I was singing it, I was singing it more as how we would sing it in church or how we would teach it and, and sing it together in a church setting. So, yes, 100 percent right, Abuna. So we're, I was trying to sing it closer to the original, how we, we learn it, how we could sing it most of the time. And so this is the difference that we wanted to show you. And you will notice these flaws here and there, but we will have to understand and, again, rely on, um, on listening and, and teaching to make sure that we are staying closer to the original, closer to what, excuse me, what the hymn should sound like while we're singing it together in church. And, and here's a good test. There is a measure that is done incorrectly and does not have the correct number of notes. Um, can anyone point out and tell us what measure that is? We'll give you a hint. This hymn is 4-4 four, four time. Good day. That's four beats. So that should give you a hint to, to answer. Oh, that's too big of a hint, Abe. I know I'm generous. <laughs> <laughs> Which measure number, if you can type, or or the word that you see is could be Ooh, incorrect? We, we got yep, the right got answer. answer. Right. Good job. Eric, yes. Eric. Measure, measure, measure 18. 18. So measure 18 only has two beats. So Abe, can, if you can go ahead and go to the next slide. So the next slide is the next part of the hymn. So I want you guys to listen here real quick. So the angels with the shepherds glorify. If you notice, so now multiple measures are incorrect. This was the other flaw that I spoke about earlier. Sometimes between the Coptic and the English, there are too many syllables, too many syllables or not enough syllables, too many words and, and, and not enough notes. So the, the, the music team has, has taken out a note because we don't actually have the original files that I should probably preface that. We don't have the original files. So instead of redoing the entire hymn, we will take out notes and, and make it just look clean so we can follow it a little bit better. Um, but in certain situations like this, we, we want to make sure it looks better for us to be able to follow easier than it is to, to try to stick to exactly how. Um, yeah. For How the sake should... of progressing through the hymn to the next destination, so to speak, of the next word you're supposed to get to. Yeah, very right. well said. Um, and so so you'll notice some, and we picked this hymn on purpose because we had just recently done it and, and we saw these flaws and we noticed some of these flaws. So it, it's a good one for us to point out. So, and also to, to make sure that you guys know, this is the exception, not the rule. Um, um, so we wanted to make sure, and that you're you're seeing this it, when you see this 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 is not saying like oh this is a, a mess up in like the whoever wrote the notes no this is actually us trying to fit the the english to the coptic and and yes in Cop i think somebody had uh looks like somebody messaged like yes in coptic they, they are a little bit more accurate um because they are written for the coptic and for the some of the uh, these hymns actually in arabic as well um all right, um, that was it for me. I'm, I'm gonna stop right here before we get into some more examples um, and open it up for a couple of questions. Any questions up to this point about the time signature, the, the rhythms now that you know what they're called, the note names now that you know what they're called, the reading across measures and boxes. Awesome, Mina, I'll unmute you. Mina El Dewani, I shouldn't have just said Mina, that's too generic. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Mina. Uh, uh, hey, so so going back to the first time that, that you told us, mm -hmm. was it a little yeah, did it the day? Yes. Uh, so so you see, so so do you see how there's a period at the end of the word ways? So at the end of ways. Is, yeah. So uh, do you see that period there? 
So yes. my question, so my question is, mm-hmm. why, why there no period at the end of the word made, and and at the end of the word let me walk, end. Oh, good question. We should have had that there, because we should because, be following okay, because, the correct because, grammar. Because, 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 I mean, if this is a pause, and this is, and this is a pause also, yeah. Then, then there, there should be a, a, a period because. Because it's why that if you're starting a new sentence. Great question. Yeah. So the the fast answer. Thank you for that. The fast answer is that we forgot to put a period to match. The text on bottom is grammatically what's written out for the entire hymn, and so we oh, should also yeah. have it in the music notes. So you're right. Actually, yes. in this case. And and also oh. the this grammar and the the punctuation everything should be matching Coptic reader. So um, a lot of the stuff that we do and. And you're hundred percent right, Mina. Like we do focus a lot on the grammar and the punctuation in, in the bottom section where we, we put everything out. Uh, we have not been focusing as much on the part that we write in the musical, musical notes as usually there's a lot of spaces and stuff in between words. So it, it might get away from us. So thank you for That's pointing that out. And, and yeah, and that is a very good comment. And especially because hundred percent right, especially in this hymn, this is indicative of certain pauses and, and breaks. Any other questions about what we've covered up to this point in today's lecture before we continue? Mark, Mark. Mikhail, go ahead, my brother. Hey, um, so what I understand and like what I've seen uh, is like, so you, it would be more, this would be more of like uh, when you first learn like the hymn, you would use this. Um, because I find when I go and like I say like this the hymn, like um reading the notes and like I've been in music for like for like five, six years, but like going with like the rhythms and the notes, like memorizing is a lot easier. So I think uh like for me, uh, I guess this is what you guys were like going at too. This is more of like when I'm learning a new hymn, this is what I would use. Um, but like it would but like when you know the hymn you would just like go off and like know it yourself, I guess, and memorize it if that's what you guys are going for. But yeah, that's I'll kind let, of how- for sure. I'll let Mina answer and then I'll, I'll kind of chime in if I have any gaps. Yeah. So the, really, that's a great point, Mark. And um, one of the things I realized, and I, I kind of alluded to this last week, is I actually have a really hard time memorizing hymns. Um, it comes to pe- like there's certain people like you, you, like yourself, like you mentioned, it's very easy for you to memorize hymns, which is great. And, and yes, in that case, 100 percent is a great tool to help you get the notes right to kind of help. Even if they're like you can't get it from the recording exactly, the notes might kind of help adjust that. Um, it, it is a great tool to kind of help you set that foundation. The for for me. And for different people are using the hymns and these notes in different ways, which is, which is actually amazing. And for me in particular, I actually, I do have to rely on these notes for quite a lengthy period of time before I do memorize it. Um, it is tougher for me to memorize in particular. I've, I've been doing music for, oh geez, since I was like five and, and I'm, and for me, that's just always been a thing. I've had to literally memorize like pieces of music in order to play and like in, in, in various situations. But one of the things I've, I always struggled with it, even collegiate level. But for me, so these music notes for me were a huge stepping stone in how I learned my hymns and continued to sing it. So yeah, I, unfortunately, I do have to have my phone out or have to have the notes on the screen or something like that, which honestly, at the end of the day, the most important part is that we are singing these hymns together. One of the cool things about maqam and, and the fact that it's melodic, so the, the thing that I referenced earlier, is the fact that it emphasizes the unity in singing one thing. So everybody in the congregation is singing the same note at the same time together. And that's really the most important thing. And, and I want to make sure that, you know, whoever is out there like that struggles like me, I think somebody's already kind of putting it in the, in the chat. Um, this is this is such a great tool to to help with that, but also for those that love memorizing and, and it comes very naturally to them, this is something else that can definitely uh, help move you along and help may, maybe even make it quicker and help you teach others as well and lead. 
So yes. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll, that's I'll my, just, my take on that. I'll add two points. Wonderfully said, Mina. I just wanted to add two points, and really, it's it's uh, the the totality of music notes are that they are so structured, um, and and what I'm saying is we all have in our mind actually uncles and and priests and malims of the church or teachers in the church who kind of have their own hisat book that they always reference, and it's written and they've had it for years. I have a malim who has like. He has one pamphlet that he always uses specifically for Pekathronos that he's had since like whatever, 1993. And so, uh, and you know, he's way older than I am, but does he have Pekathronos memorized? No. Is the goal to one day have it memorized? Perhaps. Is it wrong that he doesn't have it memorized? Absolutely not. And what we're saying is the music notes come in such a structure that you can see very clearly four beats per measure to help you memorize faster. So, for example, I'll even just say for today, the Virgin, these notes, I didn't know they were available. You know, at the time that I was learning it, I was in a senior year of high school, I believe, is when Coptic Kims in English started coming about a really more like mainstream. And so I had to first orally memorize it. And I found I was like each year because I'm not good at his that I never wrote it down. And because I didn't have music notes, I never remembered where I was messing up from the last year. And this is only sung in the nativity season, in the advent uh, nativity feast season. And so we can expand on that example for all the hymns in the Coptic church of every season for sure. But my my answer is that if if your destination is to memorize, which is that that's a wonderful goal, these will help get you there faster, as Mina said. And at the same time, I, I take pride actually in the fact that we can now use this in our churches, for example, for someone who's not Coptic, who's come into our church and has never heard our hymns, and can now look on the screen and see what's being chanted and, and how it goes, and it will help them also participate faster. In the church I serve in now in St. Paul, Houston, we have a lot of converts who never have been exposed to Coptic chant. And, and when I see them participating, it really gives me a lot of joy. And it's bec- it's not only because of this, but it's be- it's mainly in part because of the, the music notes being as a tool for that. So great question. Hopefully we answered it. I think all of us should try to memorize. The end goal is that the more you actually memorize, the more you're not distracted to read what's happening and you can pray and focus, but there's nothing wrong if it's not memorized and we all chant together. So wonderful question. Got some questions coming in. I don't know, Mina, if you took, oh, more comments on what we're talking about. Yeah. Yes. Awesome. Great, great job, guys. We're not going to read each of these, but we'll we'll scan them and actually we save all the the chat boxes from every lecture. So great job. Abe, for, for time's sake, as um, I know we took a little bit of time, so if we can go through the different praxis responses and then uh, get a few more a few minutes for some more questions at the end, because this yeah. seems to be a very engaging subject, so we're, we're excited to answer, but we definitely want to kind of show you guys a little bit more and sing a little bit more. Yeah, so moving forward, uh, we're just going to go through a few praxis responses, and the goal of this is actually to show you the notes are the same across the hymn, but the words can be different. So now you got to tune in a bit more. I encourage you guys to chant with me. For those who are very familiar with the Praxis response tune, we, we chant it all the time. This is not the long one. And going back to mean this earlier point, as you can see already measure one, we don't have notes here for the first measure because there's more syllables in Coptic. Here it's but here, and according to the recording, Copta comes in English, it starts here. So we just didn't wipe this out for you guys, but we'll start here. So I'm just going to go through so that you guys can see spacing in your head as well as uh, from word to word, as well as note reading. And here you also see some embellishment um, written that we can chant as we're going along. Okay. So I'll uh, I'll chant and and then if any of you have questions about how it went or if a measure sounded different than you thought it would, you can ask to be unmuted. Hail to you, O Mary, e, 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 the. continues 
So this is the most frequently chanted praxis response. It's the annual one for the Liturgy of the Word. And then another one we have is the one that we just did yesterday. Happy feast, many happy returns to all of you for Theophany. Uh, and so here we see new text, but the same notes. And as you can see, the example I just told you, there was more syllables in Coptic, but not in English. But this one, the tune does match exactly what's written because they found there, in this case, there was more syllables. So we have both examples and it's case by case. So there's never a hard rule, but we do follow the recordings because we see the accuracy for the English language could be different than Coptic. So I'll chant this one. And again, try and chant with me at home, even though you're on mute. Uh, and I'll try to go a little slower. I realized I went too fast, I think, in the last one. This is my beloved son continues. Hey, I had a uh, question come in. Why is there a pause after the first note in the third line? Um, first note, third line. Here. So, uh, first note. First uh, note, third line. Yeah. Sorry, I went to third measure. Third. No, that's, this, is, this is kind of a natural pause in the hymn. Um, if it, there's no indication of a rest because it's not actually a rest, uh, there's some musical notation that will indicate certain pauses. But for us, we know that this is kind of a pause in the hymn, and that's why when we actually uh, a lot of times transition into uh, another phrase or something like that. So um, that's just kind of the, the main question. One of the things to also, because these notes were taken from Father Abram Gerges, is that he uses a software called Finale, and he plays back the music on his YouTube channel, which you'll see, we'll plug it at the end. But because it's played, there's no breathing, because uh, it's an instrument not using air so to speak. It's just a piano software that plays it start to finish. But because we're chanting, we do have to breathe at some point. And as Mina said, naturally, where you would be inclined to take a breath is right here before you continue. Because and, hey, Sorry, we had a request. If you could uh, sing this with symbols, if you have them with you. Sure. I'll try to keep them away from my mic. Yes, but that's please. A, a great request because actually what I'll do is I'll try to indicate the tempo as we were snapping. Now you'll hear it um, in the symbols as well. I mean, if I'm too loud, just, just tell me stop and I'll start over. So now I can't really point because I don't have eight hands, but hopefully you saw the notes as I'm chanting, you'll see where I'm going. This is my beloved helpful i tried to go slowly good good question i forgot i actually had these sitting next to me and um one thing i'll say about symbols as mina said he has his own opinions but symbols are not meant to showcase the latest way of playing and the loudest to get the people chanting that's not correct symbols are what's called in music accompaniment and in this case also metronome those are the two functions of symbol and triangle in our chanting so I think we're out of time for the other hymns. We had some more fun hymns here as well. We had Perfect is the Blessing, which is uh, Apechike Vol. And we also had Onishti. So maybe we'll carry them over into next week. So at this point, we just wanted to close by, by saying, if you do want to learn more about reading the notes, you can go to Buna Brahm's YouTube channel. Just type his name here as you see it. If you want access to any of the notes we've worked on in Coptic Hymns in English, just download the app 
And as I showed you in the video from the first lecture, there's a section on the home screen titled Notations. And with that, I think, Mina, anything else that you want to go over or should we so, go over yes. to them? A, a couple of um, people had requested, they, they uh, came in a little bit late and asked us if we can go through a quick cliff note version. So if anyone wants to stay after, I can go through a couple of things quickly, but I, I do want to remind everyone that this is recorded and yes, will be yes. on YouTube. So you can actually go back and listen to uh, the first lesson uh, from last week, as well as the entirety of this lesson today. Um, so yeah, I had people message me after last week's lecture that they couldn't join live, but that they watched it on their own time and, and it was still beneficial. So everything is recorded and posted to Kata Kim's in English, Facebook and YouTube. And uh, Sharif, if you don't mind, could you post the YouTube link in here again as well? And so so those who want to stay on, Mina, will stay on with you after. But uh, for yes. the sake of those who joined when we started, we have two minutes left for questions and prayer. Abuna, if you're still on, I think Abuna was here. Yes, Abuna, Luke, at the end, if you can please conclude us in prayer. But any other questions before we finish up here, guys? Awesome job today. I'm really proud of the, the level that you guys are learning at and participating at. Thank you, guys. I'm Abuna, Luke, and I was asked to end by prayer. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you, Abuna. The name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Lord, we are so thankful for your presence with us. That is clear by the work of the Holy Spirit in this endeavor that my brothers have taken. And we ask you, Lord, to bless and continue to bless this project uh, so that you can use it to glorify your holy name um, within the Coptic Church through this chance and uh, this beautiful tradition that we inherited. We ask you, Lord, to bless the people who are uh, working uh, hard to bring us this uh, beautiful tradition up to be used by the entire church and the entire congregation in one unity, just like we saw in the Old Testament um, when David, the prophet, was arranging a big team of praises to praise your name amongst the whole entire people of God. Through the intercession of St. Mary and all the saints, we ask you to end this uh, lesson in peace and uh, bless us when we pray. Thankfully, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver from the evil one in Christ Jesus our Lord, for thine the kingdom, the power, the glory forever. Amen. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Abuna. Thank you. If you want to give us Thank the benediction so much, as well, if you can. God bless you. Thank you. The love of God the Father, the grace of His only begotten Son, our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, the gift and the communion of the Holy Spirit may be with you all. You may depart in peace. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with your spirit. Thank you, everyone. If you have any other questions that we didn't get to, you can email English at gmail.com. Uh, and we'll see you guys next Wednesday, same time for the final lecture. Uh, and we look forward to all the participation and you can check everything out on the social media pages. Like we said, thank you so much for joining and participating with us today. Take care, everybody.